I am Anil Kumar. In this set of videos, we'll review concepts about dot product. We'll talk about what dot product is, how to calculate dot products, how to find magnitude of vectors, angle between vectors, and we'll take a few test questions based on parallel and perpendicular vectors, scalar projection, vector projection, and work done applications. To begin with, let us try to understand why are we studying dot products. Now that is a very common question and a genuine question to ask. Now normally we are explaining physical quantities. What the hell? Like two are very important. One is uh, work done and the other is torque. Uh, let us say we have an inclined plane and you want to move an object, let's say this is an object, which you want to move some distance away on this inclined plane by applying some force on it, right? So let's say we apply some force at an angle. Let's say the angle is theta. And in case the displacement is D, force is F. In that case, you say that the work done, W, is equal to magnitude of force times the distance times cos of theta, right? So that is one thing we know how work done is related with force and distance. On the other hand, if I take up a situation where let's say we have a wrench right let's say we have a wrench here and uh, we apply some force let's say that's the wrench so that's the distance at which we are applying a force and let's say force is being applied in this direction let's call this force as f in that case what you really notice is that the angle between the two is theta. However, when you calculate the torque, what you really do is kind of like this. Well, this is angle theta, two parallel lines, and this component really helps us to move, right? So if I am applying the force so that the movement is in this direction, then let's say there's a bolt here, it will move downwards. Inside you can say right into the paper, perpendicular to the plane of the paper. And this particular component of the force is F sine theta. So in this case, you found that the torque is equal to the magnitude of force times the magnitude of this distance, let's say distance is D, times sine theta. All right. So in physics, you have seen different kinds of formulas being applied. Now in vectors, we have dot product. We say work done is both are treated as displacement and force as vectors, f dot d. And the torque is cross product, f cross d. Right. So that is the cross product. So we have two special products in vectors one is called the dot product the other one is called the cross product and the cross product is supposed to have a direction the resultant is inside the paper normally decided by right hand rule okay so thumb rule is kind of like this now since this one has a direction we say that the result is a vector itself right so so direction given by right hand rule. Okay, so, so it has a direction. On the other hand, we say work done is a scalar quantity. We say this is a scalar quantity. So 
So, so we have two types of products as you can see here. One defined as a dot product, which is also called scalar product. Since the output is scalar, right? And the other one is a cross product. In this particular set of video, we'll explore the dot product along with its application, right? Earlier, what you learned was a scalar multiple. Let me just write that also. Scalar multiple should not confuse yourself with scalar multiple. Scalar multiples result into vectors, correct? So if I say k times a vector v, it is a vector, correct? Only thing is multiplied by a scalar k, correct? Now in this particular case, when we talk about dot product, both vectors are the ones which get multiplied along with cosine of angle between them, right? So I hope this concept is clear to you. So we have these two types of products, dot product and the cross product, mainly to explain some physical quantities. And then we have really explored them uh, for other very useful concepts, including understanding equation of line, equation of plane, equation of circle, and so on. So the whole of physics can be developed based on vectors. Now let's see. What is dot product, right? So I've given you a good idea about what dot product is. So if I have a vector, let us say vector u as, uh, as let's say 2, 3, minus 1, and vector v as, uh, let's say 1, 2, 3. In that case, the dot product between u and v will be equal to the dot product we could write like this u3 minus 1 dot 1 2 3 right so so that is how we could calculate the dot product now how do we really do so well few more things to understand before we get into that concept we could also write dot product as uh, let's say geometrically if i have a vector u and a vector v let's say let's call them now different vectors let's say a vector a and vector b with the angle between them as theta in that case we could also say a dot b these two vectors is magnitude of a times magnitude of b cos of theta so that is by definition a dot product. Now when I write 2, 3, minus 1, 1, 2, 3, these are components along i, j, k, you know, let me just make like this. Okay. So when I say 2, 3, minus 1, we are representing vectors in R3, right? So these are components along x, y, and z axis, right? So you could also write them as 2i plus 3j minus, like this, 2i unit vector plus 3j minus k. And you could write v as i plus 2j plus 3k. Now if I combine these two concepts, then the dot product is let's do let's say these are my i j k right so these are my i j k so if i do vector i dot vector i what do i get i get magnitude of i times magnitude of i times cos of angle between them angle between them is zero degrees cos of zero is one so so what i get here is magnitude of i square which is 1 as these are unit vectors however if i do i dot j then then i get magnitude of i magnitude of i which is 1 1 times cos of 90 degrees now since cos of 90 degrees is 0 we get 0 if i do i dot k or j dot k right so 
in that case we get magnitudes of i and k multiplied and the angle between them is cos 90 degrees which is 0 so we, it also results in 0. So what you really see here is that when you do dot product of these then their i components get multiplied, j components get multiplied, right? So I should say i components get multiplied, j components get multiplied and k components get multiplied to get the result. Perfect. So in this particular case I could say that the dot product between u and v which is 2 3 minus 1 dot 1 2 3 could be written as 2 times 1 plus 3 times 2 uh, plus minus 1 times 3 which is indeed 2 plus 6 plus minus 3 right so which is 5 scalar quantity so it results into a scalar quantity as you've clearly seen and basically the i components get multiplied, j components get multiplied and k components get multiplied. Add them together to get the result. So that is how you are going to calculate the dot products. If you are given them geometrically with known angle, then we could adopt the formula a dot b equals to magnitudes of a and b multiplied with cosine of angle between them. Now, one general question here is how to see or calculate the angle. Let's say we have one vector here. The, the other vector is kind of like this. Now, which angle theta are we talking about? Right? So, there could be many angles with these two vectors. Let's look into these angles. We could have alpha, we could have beta, we could have gamma. Now when I do, let's say this vector is P and this vector is Q. So if I want to find what is P dot Q, it is P, Q, the magnitudes get multiplied with cosine of what? Is it alpha, is it beta or gamma? Well, that's interesting. So in this particular case, or any case when you take, the angle, angle which we talk about, is the angle where the two vectors are either meeting or they are diverging, right? So, so we have to see angle where tails meet or heads meet. So, I mean, they should be both, I mean, let me show you like this. So, the angle which we're talking about could be, so either if I extend like this, do you see that? So, their heads are at the same point, so this angle, which is same as gamma, so this angle gamma, where the heads meet. Or, I could see the vector P as going away from this point, and from this point, the other vector Q is also going away. So tails meet. Do you see that? So the angle is gamma. So the angle which you take between the two vectors is always the angle which their tails make or their heads make. So that's very important to understand. So I hope with this you have understood how to find the dot product of vectors, what dot product is, as you have seen it is scalar and uh, how to also see which angle to consider. So let's take up more examples based on what we have learned. And now we'll talk about a test question, right? So here's a test question for you. I'd like you to pause the video, copy the question, answer, and then look into my suggestions. Let me ask you a question. The question for you is, can dot product be negative? Can dot product be negative? Now, for this particular question, consider an example where, let's say the two vectors 
make an angle which is more than 90 degrees. Now, if the angle is more than 90 degrees, as I've shown you here, this particular angle is an obtuse angle. Quadrant second, right? So, in this particular case, let's say the vectors are u and v, then u dot v is going to be magnitude of u, which is positive, times magnitude of v, which is also positive, times cosine of theta, where theta is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Now, cos in that range is negative, right? So, so this angle, as you know, is negative. Therefore, it will result into negative quantity. So, what you also notice is that if the angle between the two vectors is an obtuse angle, in that case, you expect negative scalar quantity, right? And in these cases, when we are doing with the components, when you add and subtract numbers, of course, you can get negative numbers, correct? So, the result of a dot product can be positive or negative. If it is negative, it means that the angle is obtuse angle between the two vectors. And of course, you have seen it could be zero if the angle between the two vectors is a right angle, 90 degrees. With that, let's move on and take a few interesting examples. Here's the one for you.